Hey, Nico, let's find a car. Stretch. Strange, man. Start off worrying about all the usual shit. Some maniac trying to fuck you up the ass. About some other maniac who wants to slash your throat. About the awful food. Then that shit ceases to matter. Yeah. yeah. You learn to cope with the environment. Make the best of it. Learn to scare people away from you. Get food smuggled in. You know. Sure, and after a while, you stop hurting. And that ain't the problem at all. No? No. Nah. The problem is, you realize it's all the same ah! shit. In prison, outside, with the woman, on your own, with money, broke, happy, unhappy. Ah! Don't mean shit. You realize life don't mean shit, man. You teach yourself to stop caring. I know about that. But it's hard, man. Ah! I don't know how to fix that shit. I don't know how to care no more. Damn, listen to me. I'm pathetic. Yeah, hanging out with Dwayne's a real blast. <laughs> Can you understand why I don't really go out of my way to hang out with him anymore? I just kind of, he called me uh, while I was on my way to prepare for going out with someone else. And I just felt bad because I've ignored like four of his phone calls. And I mean, you don't have to hang out with anybody in this game if you don't want to. It's just like... You know, if you want to keep everyone liking you, but uh, if I feel like it's so weird. Oh yeah, I have a little a little hostage there. But it's so weird because, like, uh, I I feel like I don't get all that many calls from people to hang out in this game, and then like literally when i'm on my way to go hang out with someone like three people call me saying that they want to hang out right now and they're like oh yeah that's okay man i i guess you just got a bunch of bullshit you got to do instead of hang out with your best buddy and it's like yeah i do suck on my balls i love this japanese art in this fucking strip club I also thought that there'd be like a guard in here that was gonna like shoot me or something, but no. And someone put out their cigarette, but it's still burning in there pretty heavily. That's pretty crazy. So yeah, I thought that maybe I would just pass the time by showing off one of these arcade games, but turns out you can't do that when you're with someone at a strip club. So, you know, after... A cool five seconds of staring at someone gyrate, we're gonna head out. And Dwayne says, like, I can't even afford to be at this place that long anyway. But then here he's like, oh, where are you? Are you, are you a pussy man? Like, what? Why are we already leaving? Anyway. So, uh, yeah, speeding this up because we don't have to watch the whole fucking trip back. Um, so this is a pretty heavily edited episode, um, because the first, uh, third or so is, um, me going on a, I guess a triple date, because I did this, and then I, uh, went on a date with Carmen after I do what you're seeing here. So yeah, I thought that I would just, like, go to, like midtown because that's where a lot of like nice cars are because apparent i've i've put cars in the like parking space in front of all my safe houses and saved and for some fucking reason they're never there um and so you may remember that i uh procured a nice car a feltzer to pick up carmen in so that it would uh get her um you know, appropriately turned on, uh, but it's not there anymore. So I thought that I would go and 
like find a luxury car somewhere in Midtown. Couldn't find one, but I know that she also likes motorcycles, so I got a motorcycle. A friend of mine drives a bike as well, Nico. And yeah, a friend of her drives a bike as well. Isn't that cool? And uh, despite being like Mrs. Designer clothes and like nothing cheap touches the skin, she loves fast food uh, because it tastes good and it's food for everyone. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that means. Uh, so, yeah. She almost fell off there, Jesus. Uh, so let's take a listen to this little conversation with Carmen. Carmen? What do you really like? I don't know, honey. I like boys. I like looking good. I like watching TV. Yeah? What do you watch? All type of stuff. How else are you gonna learn about the world? If your picture of the world comes from the TV you watch in this country, then you've got to have a pretty distorted view. For sure. If you watch those big Vinewood movies and sitcoms and stuff... I'm not so sure. They got a reality TV show for everything now. Rich people, cars, hookers. They should make a show about me. <laughs> I look better than most of them bitches on there anyways. Sure. Well, what would happen in your show? I just live, you know? It'll tell everyone out there what it's like for a girl coming out of South Bohan, trying to make something of herself. Sounds like compelling viewing. I, I think I've already mentioned that, like, I never got to get a close listen to a lot of the lines that are more quietly spoken in this game until now because I'm playing it in headphones now and actually paying attention to the dialogue um, whereas before I was playing it on a console at my parents house and so I had to turn down a lot of the time just so when it got to the shooty poots parts what about what when it got to the shooty parts um, then it you know they didn't have to fucking tell me to turn it down and then I had to pause right in the middle of a heated gamer moment uh, to turn it down. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so now we're gonna uh, go on a date with Kate, just, you know, trading one lady for the other, because I forgot that I'm supposed to go on a date with Kate. Even though it's not a date, she she pains herself to, to make certain that you know uh, that it is not a date. And I gotta say, I'm not a huge fan of Kate. Uh, she has a place in the story, but just as a character, I don't find her very likable. And I don't really like having to take her out on dates because she doesn't like doing fun things. She gets mad if you drive at more than five miles an hour. Um, her, I don't know, voice just is not pleasant to me so i tried to take her to this i don't even know why they give you the fucking option to still go here if uh yeah once you kill vlad i guess they don't have acts there um so i just took her to this empty building for no reason because I wanted to go see a show but i guess i missed my chance to do that although i'm pretty sure there's a place in uh, what's it called? Like, I keep wanting to say Manhattan, but you know what I mean. Like, you know, the the center of Algonquin. There's another show place where you can go see stand-up shows, including one by Cat Williams. But I didn't see it on there, so... Uh, or maybe I'm just not looking. But yeah, this motherfucker wanted to beat me up for, you know, going into the place for two seconds. Yeah, I'm looking on there, and I don't see another show place, cabaret, whatever you want to fucking call it. Maybe it's one of the restaurants, but I don't think so. Or bars? I don't know. But yeah, this is one of those examples of the reason why I do so many of these videos and post-commentary. Even though I like being able to give, like, in-the-moment impromptu reactions to things that happen especially in this game where like 
random funny bullshit happens pretty often um uh, instead of just being like oh yeah and here's where i'm a dumbass ha <laughs> ha um the reason i do it is because like an episode like this would be like 30 minutes long and it would just be me doing the dates and like i would just be fucking stammering trying to talk about anything uh because i'm trying to focus on what's going on and like if i wanted to cut around you know on the off chance that i was making a coherent thought then uh i mean see it's happening now and i'm doing it in post commentary like it would just be even worse but yeah if if i were trying to cut around then and on the off chance that i was saying coherent sentences like i just tried and failed to do just now um then it would be all cut up and stupid and it's one would not be good so i do post commentary for the most part just for the sake of having actual commentary good night nico bellic sitting in my car vibrating And away we go. Um, so I do have something that I want to rant about. Uh, and you probably already know what it is. And I gotta say, I kept this in sped up just because I was amazed at how uh, clean of a ride this was. Up until this point where uh, that happened. Just, just a small little flip. Um, and, then, uh, and then this part. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do want to talk a bit about, um, some things concerning all of the, uh, riots and such that are happening, just, you know, to get some thoughts out there, and also because, like, these next couple missions aren't incredibly interesting or particularly important to the plot that I can remember, the next, the last one we do, I think, might, but I don't honestly remember which one it was. Um, but uh, I'm gonna wait until these dudes do their finish doing their talking before I get into that. I owe you an apology, Nico. I was dosed when you told me you killed Bucky and his boys. Yeah, you were out of it. I haven't felt safe since Aiden O'Malley went inside. Who's Aiden? Me, Bucky, and Aiden. We all cared about the same stuff. We came together for a cause we believed in. At least, I thought I believed in it. I was young. This was a while ago, then. Yeah, so Aiden got caught with something when he was somewhere he wasn't meant to be. Needless to say, he'll be inside for a time. Him? And Bucky think I talked, couldn't see no other way how he got caught. From what I hear, Aiden still rants about me to anyone who listens. I know how it feels to be betrayed. You got that look? You Park's boy? Yes, I Kim. You Dedeku? Yeah, welcome to America. We're meeting your friends in Bohan. I'll text you the route you gotta take. Best way to avoid checks. We'll cover your rear. Uh, okay, so I bet you can guess where this is going. Uh, there are gonna be dudes in boats shooting at Kim, and you have to follow him and shoot the dudes so that they don't kill him. Um, and also, you probably could guess that I fucked this one up a lot. Uh, another reason why this is the type of video that is perfect to uh, do post-commentary for, a perfect example of that phenomenon, because I would just be, you know, just saying, like, fuck dicks for this entire video. Um, and it would probably make me not want to keep recording, because that's the main thing. When I do live commentary and things are annoying, I feel a need to talk about the annoyingness. 
and it just pisses me off, and then I don't want to play the game anymore, so I get way far behind on the video. This is... <laughs> uh, anyway, but while this is going on, and while I'm failing at this thing, um, so I don't really have, like, a structured take on the whole riot thing. Um, if, if you want, like, kind of more in-depth sort of thoughts and more, you know, off-the-cuff thoughts uh, about it, I did a stream a couple days ago where I, it was a just chatting stream and I, I basically said almost everything that I could probably have to say about it. But, um, I think, if nothing else, uh, the positive thing, because I've been, I've been, like, going back and forth in the last, I mean, really, for the last few months, but, uh, in, per with this particular issue, uh, I've been going back and forth between being inspired by and very sad, uh, about these, uh, protests and riots, because I'm inspired because of the solidarity. I'm inspired because, like, a large amount of people in America actually have, like, the self-respect and bravery to not take this shit sitting down anymore. And by the way, I don't think... I, I think it should be pretty clear that it is not just about the George Floyd thing, which, I mean, if it was, it would still be entirely reasonable and understandable of reaction to it, because even now in our era of... You know, every week there's a new video of uh, police just gunning down uh, a, a usually unarmed black man. Or any person of any race on it. It's just brutalizing uh, citizens. Uh, even even now, in, in this culture where that is very prevalent, I feel like the video of the George Floyd arrest was particularly uh, egregious and disturbing. Um, and, you know, every, pretty much every city has a, a, an incident like that, uh, but with that, I, I don't think it's even just about, not only not just George Floyd, but not just about police brutality. I don't know if you would have necessarily gotten, uh this level of widespread civil unrest and disobedience if it were not for the pandemic. And I don't just, I said that to someone and they were like, oh yeah, you know, we've all been locked inside and now everybody sees protests and they're like, oh, we can go out and smash stuff. And, you know, it's a release, it's catharsis. And like, yeah, I'm, there are a few people that I'm sure that's part of it. You know, maybe the people who are going around and like smashing up smaller businesses or whatever. Um, and, you know, just kind of, like, going out to riot just for the fun, just for funsies. They don't have any actual, like, because I hope people understand. I think I'm getting ahead of myself right now, but, like, no, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that for when I'm actually talking about it. But, like, uh, I, I don't think it's just that, though. I think it's because, you know, you know, people have watched as, you know, all they got for this pandemic was, you know, one $1,200 check, and some of us, i.e. me, didn't even fucking get that, um, and have just been left to completely fend for themselves. They've seen the pictures of hospitals where the nurses are wearing trash bags, no one can get enough protective equipment, all the states have to, like, bid against each other and the federal government for the things that people need to fucking stay alive, and, uh, you know, somehow, and just more generally, just their cities, their states, their federal government, everything meant to actually, like, keep people alive and help people, all their social welfare programs, healthcare, education, infrastructure, you know, just, you know, city administration, parks, anything that's actually about, like, keeping 
you know, like, creating decent lives for people and creating, like, normal and functioning communities, all of those aspects of the state have been utterly hollowed out in the last, I would say, 20 to 30 years. Um, but police departments, like, seeing all of that, seeing just the absolute unreadiness to deal with something of immediate consequence to people's well-being, uh, and, and, you know, meanwhile, of course, you know, corporations get billions and billions of dollars in bailouts, and then top that off with, uh, this not only, um, you know, umpteenth example of horrifying state-sanctioned violence against someone you know, choking someone out for an alleged counterfeit $20 bill. Like, that's enough to get the fucking death penalty in this country. But then seeing the protests, the mostly peaceful protests against that, being met with uh, some of the most brutal and militarized police violence I've ever seen. Um, And I I I don't think, like... And already, like, people in in my own life and online who I would not really call, you know, radical or leftists or anything, um, the idea of, like, defunding or even entirely eliminating police departments and replacing them with something else is, like, gaining a lot of traction with them. It's looking very attractive to people because, you know... It's, of course, people are going to be fucking pissed off when, you know, you can't, you say that you we can't afford to give you medicine, we can't afford to protect you in, a, like, a real way, but if you, you know, if any of you dare to speak up about, you know, the state doing something wrong, we will spare no expense to... Uh, brutalize you, to surveil you, to lock down uh, in a much more serious and enforced way than they ever did for the fucking pandemic. Um, you know, yeah, that's gonna piss people off, where, you know, every other part of their community has just been hollowed out, uh, but meanwhile, you know, these uh, fucking sociopaths with guns that really are I think people are starting to realize the real rulers of their communities, and specifically the major cities. And I think that's especially apparent in how uh, all the the fucking limp-dicked uh, response to this police violence by the leaders of these places, especially in New York, uh, with you know Bill De Blasio, his uh, daughter got arrested for being in a protest and they uh fucking doxed her like the new york police union or whatever uh posted all of her personal information on there and the next day bill de blasio gets up and and is like oh thank you to the nypd for their tremendous work they've never done anything wrong uh andrew cuomo was saying you know after a video of the nypd like ramming their cruisers into a crowd of protesters was like, hey, you know, the cops aren't really doing their job here. And then the cops got mad at him, and he was like, oh, I, I didn't mean you guys. You guys are great. I, I, just, I just, I meant the management. I meant the chief. You know, that guy that I have the fucking uh, ability to fire if I want to. I, 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 don't, I don't think he was doing a great job, but you guys, you guys, you guys are doing great. You guys who are fucking shooting journalists' eyes out with rubber bullets for just being on the street and that's the thing that that's the thing that i think is really like uh heightening the anti-police sentiment in this country is not just the fact that they're tear gassing and shooting with rubber bullets peaceful protesters but um the fact that uh it's also just random fucking people just bystand i mean there's tons of videos of just people walking on their street like going to their home near where the protests are that was a fucking sick flip and i am extremely surprised that i didn't fall off the bike i can do that and not fall off of course but if you you know bump into the curb then that's enough i think that actually this mission is pretty fun i used to think it was a big pain in the ass and once again it's another scripted 
uh, chase mission where you arbitrarily can't kill them until a certain point, but, uh, you know, it takes you through the subways. It's at least, like, a neat little set piece, and it's, like, a little bit different. Um, but yeah, like, I, you know, the videos are just random people getting fucking body slammed or tear gas just for, like, existing near the police, as well as the videos of the police, like, planting bricks and destroying their own, uh, cars, or, like, smashing windows of places, uh, and all of these other things. Uh, and just more of these revelations of things that most of us already knew, which is that cops in America are the biggest and most well-funded criminal enterprise in the country, um, and they do not exist to, uh, protect and serve at least not all of the citizens, they are there to protect property and, you know, the upper and middle class. And that's especially true for fucking New York City, because New York, New York City in, in the last decade or so, even more so than it was before, has just become a place for people to sink money into, like real estate investors to sink money into. And you keep those property values up, by having an extremely rigid and brutal uh, policing system. That must have really fucking hurt. Um, but again, I'm, I'm getting a little bit uh, away from the original thing. And I'm mostly just rambling here. Like I said, I don't really have like a, a whole planned rant or anything. I just have a couple points that I thought of, but um, one thing I do want to say uh, before this video ends that I think is very important is uh, it really I've seen a lot of people, especially liberals, being like uh, well, you know the people who are peacefully protesting, that's good, but the people who are rioting, using this as an excuse, hijacking the protests uh, to do crimes, to do riots, to loot businesses and everything uh, they, they're delegitimizing the protest. And I gotta say, it really is not worth it to quibble between the two for a couple of reasons. One, rioting and looting are legitimate forms of protest. Uh, you know, in, in a society that, uh, prioritizes goods, you know, uh, and, and consumerism over preserving human life, uh, you know, going into a huge like, corporate chain store and stealing things that you then, like, either just keep for yourself or redistribute out to the community, as many people did with what they stole from that Target in Minneapolis, um, it, that is a legitimate form of protest. It is, it is a, and more in general, a rejection of the system that the police are there to protect and that the state, you know, upholds, um, and uses violence to uphold, um, so, you know, like, yeah, every every riot, every mass protest is going to have a few cranks, it's going to have a few over-eager, you know, young, they, they're being called anarchists, but just generally uh, people who, uh, you know, kind of get a little out of hand, maybe smash up some of the wrong businesses or whatever. But the thing is, like, you really don't you have to, you don't have to endorse 100% of every individual person's actions 100% of the time. Like this is kind of about whose side you're on in a way. And riots are the inevitable response to the state treating its people this way. And historically can be and already are there are some signs that it already will be an arbiter of real change. So there's just it, it is just, just like kind of just support them like i don't i don't understand why we need to quibble about like which one of them is good or not it's uh is really a moot point um and uh once again i've talked myself right to the end of the video next time we'll be meeting florian kravich possibly one of the two people who betrayed us in the war so i will see you then for that maybe i'll talk more about this bullshit then maybe i won't uh, I'm just pissed off and wanted to talk about it. So, yeah, I'll see you next time for more things.